so today topic is nutrition management and uh, again uh, connecting to the, the line that you want to go what we are doing is uh, when we are healthy if you look uh, if you treat food as medicine then you don't have to take medicine as food later so that's the whole philosophy and here what we do is we try to focus on growing the uh, vegetables healthy vegetables and fruits healthy so that you fall less sick right instead of falling sick and then reacting to that you take healthy food and then eliminate those chances which will make you unhealthy by unhealthy choices of your food okay so uh, the topic nutrition management brings us uh, to that level of preventive care wherein we say uh, uh, providing right kind of nutrition for the plant is very vital so that uh, we get the nutrition back uh, from the harvested uh, crops um, so again here as i said in the last meeting about pest management uh, we already have a routine we already have an approach we already have a schedule of different kinds of nutrition that we uh, provide and i also have written a blog post in my website wherein uh, the schedules and the tables are all provided so maybe we should probably let uh, focus on today understanding the importance of following the right dosage uh, and the uh, schedules provided what is the importance of these things yeah. right uh, and probably that will help in complying better so uh, there are two things that comes in uh, nutrition uh, timing of uh, application and dosage of application so these to become very important and uh, what is the timing part timing part is at what point in time of the plant growth you apply different types of inputs second is in what frequency you apply so this is the uh, uh, timing part uh, and uh, what was the second part i said the frequency Uh, frequency with which we uh, we apply and dosage yes important is uh, second important thing is dosage so dosage is equally important because uh, i'll give you a simple example of watering typically you know uh, very anxious gardeners so what we think is uh, what watering the plants is good for, for the plants so uh, more watering better for the plants so this is the general idea isn't it but anything too much is too bad right so you need to water adequately some plants require less water some some plant require more water some plant require more frequent water some plant require intermittent watering so different plants have different needs uh, and uh, at the same time when you think that uh, something is problematic to the plant and then you do more watering you are actually creating bigger problem for the plant right similarly even the nutrition when we talk about it it is important to understand that the uh, right balance of nutrition is what the plants need they don't need too much or too less of anything so sometimes when some of the nutrients become too much that will go into a hyper mode of mm. that kind which will uh, reduce their capability in other areas simple example if you have a uh, overdose of nitrogen uh, for the plants uh then what happens it go into a, a hyper growth a foliar growth mode so when it goes into a foliar growth uh, hyper mode what happens it starts profusely you know branching out giving lot of leaves very dense branching starts happening and in this process what happens that it is taking more time as well so there is a time line for different phases of plant growth so uh, a typical uh, plant would have uh, germination uh, and then uh, uh, seedling stage and then the foliar growth stage flowering stage fruit setting stage and the harvest stage fruit growth and harvest stage so these are the typical stages right and uh, each of them has a specific time frame because we also need to get the harvest at the right season that is very important for its good value in terms of nutrition texture and everything taste and everything and now when one of the phases stretch too much because it has uh, abundance what happens it is eating into the time of the rest of the phases so this is what is happening and when the flowering happens late and once the flowering happens the amount of time it needs after fruit setting to become a fruit will be the same 
there could be some uh, slight differences depending on again the con con condition but generally if it takes 3 to 4 weeks for the fruit to become ready for harvest it will require 3 to 4 weeks right so it gets pushed on to the uh, further uh, not uh, timeline and the consequence of that is that season that it is entering into may not be conducive mango is a classic example right so know what is happening uh, mango is a summer summer yield so it grows in uh, flowers in winter grows uh, through the uh, winter and uh, summer transition and comes to harvest in uh, summer right look at the you know the changes it is going through dynamics it is going through it needs those dynamics to happen in the it winter. flowers in winter is it yeah it starts wow. flowering in winter right there are early early types and there are late types early types will uh, start flowering as early as november december already oh wow so late ones will uh, come in february march but still it is a transition stage right and it takes another you no know, sweet six weeks probably for it to come to harvest or even two months to come to harvest okay preland may first yeah and uh, up to up, up to monsoon if you can harvest depending on the variety for example the uh, what is that andhra variety uh, banganpalli you know can be harvested at as late as june until june but then if the rain starts in between uh, the two things will happen hail storms one thing which will spoil uh, physically which will spoil because of temperature uh, uh, no, drastic temperature shock and secondly the impact because these two reasons will spoil the fruit second day is once the rain start picks up the fruit will start getting worms right so these are the two typical problems and now if the whole phase shifts and and the fruits also will become less sweeter and less more sweeter more watery water. exactly so these are the consequences so you can understand the importance of the training of uh, harvest that is very very important so the plants have to go through the right uh, you know time frame for different growth phases right so this is very important and similarly uh, providing nutrition at different uh, time in right dosages becomes so important so as i gave you a simple example of uh, nitrogen another kind of example uh, would be potassium for example so non availability of potassium will also hinder the capability of the plants to absorb phosphorus right so if you have uh, right balance of potassium phosphorus also will become available to the plant because there is a biochemical reaction happening and different kinds of uh, chemical compounds are getting formed based on the microorganism dynamics in the soil and uh, one supports the other the absence of one is also creating trouble uh, with the other even though phosphorus is present it, it will not become bioavailable as much as it it would be in the presence of potassium there are so many different kinds of these kind of interactions this is just to drive in the concept of the right timing and the right dosage uh, uh, why it is important for you and a lot more details if you have to go uh, scientifically but having understood this much now coming back to the kind of schedule we have you can also understand uh, there are liquid nutrition there are also solid nutrition isn't it so uh, what is the most classic example of solid nutrition okay super compost right? yeah. that's the classic staple food for the plant compost right so that is the mother of all okay and it has fantastic effect on the soil first and foremost it gives very diverse base of macro and micronutrients first thing second thing 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 is it neutralizes the ph value of the soil so a uh, uh, good application of uh, compost a regular application of compost in the soil already helps in neutralizing the uh, uh, the ph of the soil and uh, it will also help in maintaining good ec value electrical conductivity value of course it also depends on water to a good extent and also other nutritional supplements you add what kind of salinity or building into the soil but by and large uh, compost is one of the major contributor wherein it can also neutralize uh, ec to the right uh, uh, useful range and, but the limitations of uh, uh, compost so the soil is dynamic soil does not Uh, uh, remain the same uh, over time so you today you prepare your soil mix you cannot say two months it is the same soil mix because lot of things are happening you are watering sun is sunshine is falling rain uh, drainage is happening plants are growing weeds are growing so you are removing weeds putting it to compost some nutrition is gone there and then the plants are going growing they are taking up nutrition so lot of dynamic changes are happening in the soil 24 by 7 okay that means 
the same plant which was uh, enjoying a kind of resources in the soil now after two months may not have the same level of luxury because let us say this the growth now was more foliar growth where it found lot of nitrogen because you were giving lot of jivamrita uh, or you had access to uh, cow urine so you were feeding cow urine so nitrogen over growth right but then you are not feeding it you are enjoying the growth you think that continuously feeding that helps so you keep on feeding the same even beyond the foliar growth stage what is happening plant is only getting more nitrogen of course it is also getting others but more nitrogen right so it is starving of probably some of the micronutrients that is required during that particular phase which after 2 months uh, is occurring that means transition transition is happening to the next stage the flowering stage so the plants are by and large now missing started start experiencing that they don't have the micronutrients uh, of the uh, kind of uh, you know uh, uh, bandwidth that they need in order to now propagate to the next stage they start suffering what is the suffering you experience in the plant they are not flowering flowering is not happening oh i have fantastic growth in the tree in the plant but there is absolutely no flowering so this is what is happening in the soil so what you need to do you need to give the uh, nutrient balance in the right uh, timing in the right frequency in the right dosage this and is the key right stages also right stages exactly so timing is what i'm how do you know stages. what is the right frequent uh, right uh, dosage for each plant because it varies right correct so from plant uh, to plant. Do dosage for the plant is about the the dosage here is the dilution ratio one thing uh, second thing is the quantity amount of uh, feed that has to go to specific plant and depending yeah. on the what size uh, that's what so now what happens depending on different types of uh, plants and growth uh, growth phases how big they are you are also administering the amount of water yeah so you give more water to a larger uh, plant you give less water to a smaller plant now when you have the dilution ratio assured if we say 1 is to 10 1 is to 30 whatever ratio if you if you have assured by the amount of water you are administering to the plant your dosage requirement is taken care that you don't have to by and large worry because you are giving more water so more amount of nutrition is going in let yeah. us say uh, panchagavya if yeah, you are yeah, giving yeah, yeah. more amount absolute quantity is going in which will take care of that bigger size of yeah. uh, 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 the plant right and uh, uh, then about the liquid nutrition now we talked about compost second is the liquid nutrition uh, compost is something like if you look at our food it is like rice in south uh, wheat in the north something like that so that's the the core uh, you know uh, mass that you consume similarly that is the core mass that the plants get so then we have pickle we have chutney pudi we have dal we have sabzi we have so many sides that is going along with that okay it's a micronutrient and each one of them have their own value and as you can recognize even seasonally we change our sides what goes into the main uh, uh, dish changes seasonally in different season we consume different things why because they have a specific reason why we consume those in those seasons right sometimes you need more heat sometimes you need more cool sometimes you need more protein for example uh, more fat so depending on that your uh, attachments associate you know uh, uh, associate nutrients combination also will change similarly for the plants you have all these nutritional supplements so each one of them is boosting one or the other so let us start with these so these two are the seed cakes so this is the uh, neem seed cake the, the brownish uh, one and this is the pongamia seed cake the more grayish one so we predominantly you now stick with uh, these two because as we understand this is already giving you a lot of different types of properties that is desirable in a soil it is giving you good nitrogen it is giving you a very good base of micronutrients and it is giving you good pest and disease resistance qualities so it is giving you lot of valuable qualities and the more varieties of seed cakes that you add you will get similar qualities uh, better possibilities because you are covering wider range but then that comes at a cost of variety management you need to manage those varieties you need to procure yes. them you need to mix them properly you need to keep the, the proportions of them so all these things will be additional effort as a gardener so what we said so if we can, if you already get 90% of the benefit with these two that's a good trade off instead of adding too many varieties 
so i could bring uh, castor oil seed i could bring some other uh, some other seed and then when we talk about edible oil seeds like you have groundnut seed you have uh, sesame seed mustard seed so many things and now you are it is enough to confuse you already where to source how to prepare and and these are non edible seeds the, we the, the, we don't consume these seeds but groundnut and all we are we consume so there are different varieties edible and non edible seeds uh, and once you extract oil you get the flakes one of the um, uh, important aspect you need to know about edible seed cakes is if you apply the edible seed cakes in solid form in the soil you are inviting insects because they are edible mm. uh, insects are also attracted first thing what comes in is ants and you know we discussed last week <laughs> when you have ants you have uh, host you lot open of the door. Uh, open the door for uh, uh, insects <laughs> pests as well as diseases we are bringing all all the all these things together so uh, if you want to use edible cakes you need to my recommendation would be to ferment it for 48 hours with a little bit of jaggery or sugar uh, and then give that liquid whatever sedimentation that is remaining you put it to compost and then you give compost to the plant so you get full advantage of that so they are they are very very valuable they are very nutritious in the soil but the thing is when you apply you need to take care with non edible cakes that is not a problem so we have uh, uh, no uh, zero din on these two cakes which gives you a very fair deal in terms of ad- adding uh, seed cake related nutrients and then we have specific uh, booster uh, components no micro and macro nutrients both talking about the first macro nutrient phosphorus right so rock phosphate is a natural rock dust Uh, which is a mined uh, rock powdered into a very fine uh, form and uh, this is uh, uh, basically p2o5 it's a chemical compound um, and uh, it has up to 20% water soluble uh, phosphorus available when you add this into water and uh, stir it well up to 20% phosphorus is immediately available by the pl- uh, to the plants and the rest of it in that fine uh, powder form has to go through further breaking down with a microorganism called phosphorus solubilizing bacteria so that has a capacity to process these fine particles and then in the next period of next one year slowly they start breaking down and then becoming available to the plants right and this phosphorus in npk so p is phosphorus n is nitrogen k is potassium so and these two neem cake and uh, ungemia they also give you n right Uh, they also, they give you uh, mainly n and yeah. other micronutrients and some amount of phosphorus and potassium but not not much so they give you good amount of n uh, nitrogen but you need this in addition to compost that as i said compost is your baseline yeah. and then you boost it you boost it uh, yeah. with other uh, supplements as long as your compost is doing your job every every of your job none of these are required but then they won't because it depends on the source of your compost so what is it made of is it made of cow dung manure is it made of sheep goat manure is it made of farmyard manure is it made of kitchen waste it depends on what is the input and each input has its own quality characteristic features so when you look and when you when you uh, consider cow dung manure and the cow is only getting hydroponic fodder uh, it is mainly getting uh, predominantly getting uh, uh, corn uh, uh, fodder right that is the staple food for it and then additionally some bhusa some so few other things are getting but mainly it is getting grass right that is yeah. more nitrogen there so the less bandwidth basically similarly goat manure uh, it eats lot of uh, dry matter all uh, stems bush bushes these things so it is getting more carbon so more carbon uh, composition will be more in the uh, uh, sheep manure so likewise if you are using again kitchen waste it depends on what you consume some some families consume only 3 4 varieties of vegetables they don't have a wide uh, wide uh, bandwidth so the in- input to the compost is limited to the source yeah. of uh, composting material isn't it so it is not guaranteed that the compost has everything in it and now when you rely only on compost the consequences as long as it is going good you enjoy it a very simple solution but when you have uh, some deficiency it manifests in terms of some problem with the plant isn't it so now you get into a reactive mode so you first the problem has to become so pronounced that it starts appearing in the plant and plant starts suffering and then you need to notice you have to be sensitive to notice this change in the plant all these things take time and during this period the plant is suffering 
plant is suffering means performance loss for gardeners because the time is precious we talked about the stages tomato four months crop and every every other week there is a phase change something yeah. else is happening to the plant once once isn't it uh, and each phase shift there is a different requirement of micro macronutrient combination once it's shown in the plant uh, it is i think the it is reaching the dangerous level exactly <laughs> you so have to append you need to immediately identify and then diagnose ask questions and get the response and if you don't have the supplement readily available procure the supplement and then apply it and after and application it also. takes a cycle for absorption and then uh, again uh, showing the response based on that so this already you will lose precious time so when you lose this precious time it will show up in the performance obviously right so the whole idea of growing uh, uh, and maintaining a garden is to grow healthy crops and bumper crops and uh, uh, in the process if you are doing certain things which will uh, actually jeopardize this objective what is the point so what we said instead of going reactive let us do some proactive steps we don't want too many options but we will exercise those options which are really valuable magnesium for example is very very important so magnesium is important for germination and magnesium is important for chlorophyll formation magnesium is in, uh, important for flower uh, flower formation right so we have red blood cells and these red blood cells are uh, made up of uh, uh, iron molecule as nucleus right similarly in plant world chlorophyll is made up of magnesium as the nucleus of chlorophyll so you can correlate between the two right so magnesium is so important if magnesium is missing chlorophyll formation will not happen and consequently the 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 green color because of chlorophyll right that is missing plants will turn yellow and uh, it cannot synthesize the sunlight energy and produce food so now it is getting into a negative spiral is it right yeah. so that is one example so likewise deficiency of each of the nutrients will have its own issue calcium deficiency for example in particularly uh, the tomato. chili tomato brinjal these kind of family potato this the same family they are all same family so in tomato the biggest problem is it will manifest at the last stage the black what you can actually experience it will be you know blossom and rot uh, uh, for the tomato so bottom side of the tomato will start getting rot- rotten black when it starts ripening that is the last stage there is no way you can uh, reclaim the tomato anymore that's gone and if there are bunches of clusters even, like that you can even uh, anticipate ah, this on. is this whole preventive and proactive measures is uh, in anticipation no no if you did not do it you, you can't even anticipate that it's going to rot correct correct so you see it when it is rotting yeah. and you do last stage ah uh, what do you do at that yeah. time that is gone that yeah. particular tomato or the cluster or the bunches or that batch is gone there is no chance of recovery at that time yeah. further flowering further fruits which are in a uh, uh, just growth stage immediately you can administer and you can salvage it but um, majority of your crop is already gone is it worth it definitely not so that's why what we said we will give you a kind of schedule of a very simple set of nutritional uh, matrix uh, so as i said for uh, phosphorus we have rock phosphate for uh, magnesium and sulfur we have epsom salt for calcium and magnesium we have dolomite right and uh, for uh, pest resistance disease resistance uh, nitrogen other micronutrients we have seed cakes and then we also have one more thing which i miss bringing today called mm-hmm. nutrimix which is a blend of all to make life even more easier for us it's now remembering easy. remembering each one of them so many schedules already uh, when do you for example if you add these two they have a kind of you know soil resilience of up to 3 months when you administer now they will get digested in 3 months this will digest in 1 year this will digest also in similarly 1 year this is immediately uh, soluble and immediately available to the plant so each one have their own different kinds of dynamics in the soil already so how will we now uh, standardize this so that we can tell you okay just uh, apply this in this frequency in this quantity you are taken care so with years of uh, our uh, experiments and uh, uh, gathering experiences from also user, users we developed this nutrimix which is a blend of all of these and couple of other things uh, which once you, once you start applying once a month you are already covered 
99.9% you are already covered and we have seen that it is a fantastic amendment soil amendment for growing definitely vegetables for fruits for lawns for flowers so it is helping all these areas and the same same formula is helping all these areas because it is a it is like a complete plant food you know complan for the plants <laughs> right so um, that one thing is the easiest but still when you want to use it in large quantities and if that turns out to be a little expensive you have individual of them so in my potting mix uh, recipe i have given all of the, all the details how to blend and how to mix and all these things are provided already so you can make yours so when you do in large quantities my recommendation is you can use individual of them and then you have each of these uh, individual uh, packets what is this sir in the middle i'll come to that uh, each of these individual packets as reserve material so that if there is a calcium deficiency additional boost is required you can immediately you have it handy you may not use this regularly if you are using nutrimix but they, they don't expire also all that you have to keep it is air tight right they won't expire so you can keep it as long as possible as your insurance whenever it is needed then only you can administer that right so uh, this one most important is the bio fertilizer mix there are five different types of micro soil microorganisms which are basically doing the job of feeding the nutrition from all these inputs to the plants in the form in which it can absorb right so these are all now in certain uh, forms uh, but the plant roots can absorb the nutrients only when it is in ionic form right all the fun micro and micronutrients whatever we are talking about they finally have to get into their basic level only then the roots can absorb that is called ionic form okay the positive and negative so positive ions is what is getting attracted to the roots basically okay and now how do we get this in in chemical uh, farming that is one of the biggest advantages they have they make water soluble fertilizers once you add it into water and mix it or give it to soil and then add water immediately the constituents dissolve and get into become ionic form then immediately absorbable by the plant roots but in organic and natural farming practices this is not straight forward you give you inputs in different forms in different composition different compounds biochemical compounds and now this has to be eventually converted into uh, ionic form and that is what is done by this uh, bio fertilizers what is there it called is there a specific type uh, there are five different microorganisms uh, one is nitrogen fixing microorganism Uh, the other one is uh, phosphorus solubilizing bacteria zinc solubilizing uh, bacteria and then you have pseudomonas uh, and then you have uh, uh, trichoderma so tr- these these are again uh, important in protecting the uh, plants uh, at the se- right from the seed stage basically so they are all helpful in uh, creating the environment processing this food in such a way that finally eventually at the bottom line they all are converted into different kinds of organic acids so humic acid fulvic acid uh, gibralic acid uh, this acid that acid uh, so different types of you know acids are created by the microorganism different microorganisms are uh, experts in different you know lactic acid from lactic acid bacteria so these organic acids are the ones which make the components dissolvable in the water and then available in the ionic form and that is when the roots can absorb and there are also you know mycorrhizal fungi so which are available always you know clustered around the root zone right so um, we don't have that here uh, added here but they are all already there in in the compost and in the soil and uh, a healthy garden will always have enough uh, population of that if required we can also do additional uh, uh, boosting but as of now until we have done we have not found you know the requirement to specifically bring that but of course that's a very good addition to add so we also have these you know bio control agents which i discussed last week which does the additional job of protecting giving you know kind of they are all bodyguards uh, of the soil they give various func- functionalities so one is helping in uh, uh, you know uh, ants and uh, what is that termites grubs so they control them they, they create an endemic kind of a situation uh wherein uh, they, they these kinds of you know soft bodied uh, insects they get infected like the way we had corona and the entire colony can collapse and then regaining this colony regenerating this colony takes months so uh, infrequent application of quarterly or half yearly is good enough 
So like that, I have again researched and formulated five different uh, types of uh, um, biocontrol agents, which by and large takes care of most of the perennial problems that we face in our gardens. But that is uh, the topic uh, uh, for the pest control. So coming back to the nutrition, uh, we have the, as I said, liquid nutrition, solid nutrition. And I explained you by and large about the solid nutrition. About the liquid nutrition, we have what? We have uh, Jeevamrita, the most popular one, Panchagavya, we have composti, we have Bokashi brew, whoever is practicing Bokashi composting. And then we have these kind of formulations called Phytonic Plus and many other different brands bring different kinds of uh, uh, formulations as growth promoters, as uh, uh, specific seaweed supplements, extract. seaweed extract, so many other inputs are there. Plus probably you can also make, uh, there are so many recipes depending on the uh, practices that you go for. There are so many practices today like permaculture practice you have, you have uh, Subhash Palekar methodology, you have go based farming methodology, so many different practices, biodynamic farming, uh, many different methods are there. Whichever you google and find out and you get impressed that you can follow, they bring some kind of uh, re recommendations to you which you can uh, take up. But the base recommendation we have already provided and that is wholesome already. So when, when we do practice our gardening, we use religiously follow those methods they are quite successful right so liquid nutrition and solid nutrition so solid nutrition forms the soil base will give the resilience strength and, and uh, uh, nutrition in the soil protects the pl plant roots with various diseases and uh, pests and that is your baseline right and now when you are adding liquid nutrition you are doing two things one is whatever uh, uh, soil has it has some component of immediately available nutrition, some component which are slowly decaying and then becoming available over time, which is very, very important because if you don't have this uh, slowly decaying matter, microorganisms will not have food. These microorganisms, they will uh, not sustain. They will start depleting very fast, right? And hence, you need uh, slowly decaying matter in the soil. And now, from time to time, since now you say short duration uh, stage cha uh, phase changes, and they have intense uh, requirement for uh, uh, nutrition and we also want best harvests right we want to have bumper good quality well good size nutritious tasty harvest right so you need to provide them uh, you know keep on pushing additional nutritional dosage boosting from time to time and a very good practice for that is at the minimal uh, during foliar growth stage you provide uh, jivamrita because jivamrita is loaded with uh, nitrogen because you have cow dung and cow urine both come with you know rich in nitrogen so you get quick boost of uh, nitrogen and follow the dosage and frequency don't overdo it right that is important as i said more dosage of nitrogen because soil has already compost which has nitrogen supplements has nitrogen and then you are giving again nitrogen okay so by looking at the kind of growth in the plant you will get to know uh, immediately within the first 10 days you should see vigorous growth building up after germination and then when you are growing a wine in the first three to four weeks if your uh, uh, main wine is you know getting uh, this size and then bigger then you are assured of a bumper harvest but at the same time if you see that even after seven eight weeks it is still grow growing uh, going the foliar growth then you know that you have given a uh, uh, lot of nitrogen overload but it is not a problem actually from the plant point of view it is not a problem what is plant understanding plant understands i have fantastic resource base there's nothing to worry let me first spread myself because the more i spread more i can propagate because more i can uh, produce seeds this is what the plant thinks so it is growing it doesn't mind at that time skipping a cycle instead of giving the fruits this season i am fine i will give next season what is the hurry let me thrive let me flourish first. This is what the plant's logic is going about. Right? So, harvest is not missed. But we are missing the cycle, basically. Seasonal harvest. We don't see harvest at that point in time. So, we think this plant is useless and we remove it. But actually, if you let it, instead of giving you 5-10 uh, bottle gods, it will give you 30-40 bottle gods uh, in the following season. Yeah. But we don't have the patience, we don't have the understanding. Right? So, either we uh, remove it, um, or uh, we think that you know, seed is not good, something oh, else is not good, pest some, comes, some kind pest of comes in, pest comes in, something else is happening because also there is seasonal dynamics happening. So you get into a different loop basically. So to avoid that, 
you need to give the right dosage in right frequencies so that you can go through those growth stages in the right time cycle okay that is very important so once you have um, uh, you know uh, start experiencing first flowering in the plant my recommendation would be to switch to panchagavya because panchagavya will give you a broader micronutrient base so moderate nitrogen broader micronutrient base and nutrimix will become very important there because you need phosphorus uh, you need other ma- ma- micronutrients magnesium for example for flower setting and you need more phosphorus for Once food formation first first flower shown first flower shown you start administering uh, nut- uh, nutrimix already we mix in the you soil. already have it 5 mm-hmm. to 7 weeks it's fine you don't have to add nut- uh, nutrimix at that time jeevamrutha uh, will become more important and then after 5 6 weeks you start giving two handful one handful or four handfuls whatever we have recommended in compost and then the continue giving the uh, jeevamrutha first flowering you transition to panchagavya and then start now uh, with the nutrimix or any of these no combinations if you want to make your own fair enough you start giving with this what you are doing you suddenly you reduce the uh, input of nitrogen you increase the micro micronutrient base so this is helpful for uh, flower uh, se- uh, formation fruit setting and fruit growth right and this phytonic plus is excellent for uh, fruit development so again uh, just when the first uh, button uh, starts now uh, uh, fruit starts you if you start spraying this uh, you will get fantastic uh, growth uh, uh, potential uh, for the fruits vegetables so very simple right and then uh, next what happens you finish the harvest cycle and then you have the soil available now there are different options for you you can go for uh, uh, succession planning like now you have the cycle uh, what will you do after uh, one uh, one type of vegetable is done what will you do next cycle so you start with uh, nitrogen rich vegetables when you have a fresh soil mix uh, that would be uh, what what would that they be for example greens for example more greens will be the starting point and then you go with uh, bushy vegetables aerial bushy vegetables with uh, uh, like tomato uh, okra brin- brinjal these kind of vegetables and then you move next to the root vegetables right so when you make these kind of transition in the soil what you are doing in one stage of uh, one batch you have used predominantly one type of nutrition and the other nutritions are available in the soil but that particular nutrition is a little depleted so you compensate that nutrition for the next cycle of the plant don't worry too much about the other nutrition because it's already there your success rate will be already high with the next cycle of a different kind of planting yeah yes uh, as you said last year last first time we saw the uh, in aqua save we saw, uh, saw the leafy vegetables yeah and with that why i saw beetroot and uh, this uh, all root vegetables yeah. and with that one um the turmeric one hmm, hmm. so which come as a fantastic correct, correct. but this time what i did is i, I forgot to i skip the season okay okay because that one uh, only leafy vegetables i saw so i have to see the next uh, thing hmm, hmm. exactly so the cycle is like this fresh soil mix greens after that you go with bushy vegetables like tomato and other vegetables and after that you go to root vegetables after root vegetables you go to brassica family what are those uh, cabbages broccoli nol col uh, uh, then uh, broc uh, uh, what is the other one Ca- uh, cauliflower so these kind of vegetables and after you have completed that you go to beans legumes which legume varieties what is legume varieties doing nitrogen is most deplete at this stage legume varieties will mm-hmm. fix nitrogen in the yeah. soil will prepare for the next cycle because you need more nitrogen when you start with the greens so if you don't take as a hard and fast rule take as a broad guidance when you plan your succession and when you do the seasonal changes you are planning for the next season right now you are planning for the monsoon sowing right if you do a good job in monsoon sowing now for the next 4 months you can only help in growing those plants and enjoy the benefit of them you don't really have to do more repeated sowings that's how you have to plan that makes it very easy for then garden management instead of doing very frequently let us say you you gourds will grow very well now right if you plant good amount of gourds now until november you have uh, uh, growth and harvest uh, september november you will have fantastic you know you can enjoy fantastic harvest of gourds during that period so if you plan meticulously that way then it will become very simple and at the same time you can enjoy abundant harvest 
all that you have to do is you have to follow this routine the uh, smartly you have to transit uh, between the different kinds of nutritions and then do pest management pruning practices so you can focus on that at that time basically right so uh, this cycle if you follow and each of these batch changes from greens to other uh, vegetables when you change you need to top up you need to give the booster dose of compost and other nutrients so that the next crop can pick up quickly but you don't have to redo the whole soil from zero because as we said with this cycle uh, with this looping you can ensure that the the conservation of the resources are ensured and the maximization of uh, you know extracting the nutrients from this to the plants is available right so this is pretty much uh, about the nutrition management we can discuss questions now yeah i was wondering in the context of tomato or brinjal or any of the plants if we can talk about uh, uh, is there any recommendation in terms of for germination if there is any of these specific uh, like you said magnesium yeah uh, or when you is it the same thing when you for gods versus tomato and brinjal magnesium is a common baseline right. so maybe but but when, when so there is a germination stage then then you uh, then you have small plants or Correct. or the roots seedlings and saplings seedlings stage, and sapling yeah. stage. Um, and then there is foliar growth and then there is uh, flowering and so in the context of let's say tomato and brinjal is one example and maybe uh, gods is another example or something else is third just greens are how do you differ the quantity of nutrition or does it vary depending on the type of vegetable you are growing yeah uh, if if there is course, any if there is any general recommendation at the very specialization level yeah but uh, as i said earlier if you just follow the dosage and the variety of nutrients uh, provided uh, and the regular watering cycle yeah. for the type of plant that you are growing is already taken care okay. yeah, so that that level you don't have to really worry about because you are you are frequently providing if one time it is a little less it gets compensated the other time basically so you don't have to really worry about it because if you go on thinking at that level it gets complex because then you need to really understand each of the plants yeah you, I, otherwise uh, you will have a huge excel table where i will start giving you for each type of each plant what kind of dosage how will you manage this practically that becomes imp- impossible and then you will not see yeah. the excel table uh, that that will be ignored it will only be effort for me to create that table but uh, nobody will no, uh, is there any general recommendation for example goats tend to have more requirements for correct. nutrition correct you only need to, to as greens. i said goats are Maybe. heavy feeders yeah. you double the quantity whatever you are giving uh, to tomato kind of plants you double the quantity maintain the frequency or you double the frequency maintain the quantity so you are giving more frequently uh, same dosage of uh, uh, feed or uh, maintain the frequency and then you increase the quantity depending on your uh, let us say if you are growing in a small container then you cannot double the quantity yeah then you need to double the frequency yeah. so you need to look at your conditions and accordingly you have to adjust and second thing is if you have small container and then you cannot give solid nutrition so much then you need to increase your frequency of giving uh, liquid, liquid nutrition more and more then you have to do both foliar spray as well as uh, soil amendment because there are various ways in which plants can absorb the nutrients and you maximize the chances of plants getting the nutrients from various ways so i talked about the stem stem diameter right the bigger the stem diameter the better capability for the plant to absorb uh, a ma- large num- large amount of roots at the same, uh, nutrition at the same time but when the pot is a very small you have to exactly so now what happens you have root zone the root zone can be only as much as the soil volume it cannot be more than that isn't it so you give the soil volume roots will spread as much as possible within the soil volume it cannot go beyond that right and now there is a limitation in the root network second is the the stem is very slender no it cannot absorb nutrient all at once and it can also also root nutrients all at once and now if there are uh, innumerable number of uh, fruits that are set imagine what happens none of them will get enough nutrition then what will the plant do it will do different things depending on the variety of the plants the specific varieties may drop drop which it cannot manage they will drop the fruit set and you may be wondering what is happening uh, all my fruits are set but they are all dropping and Or, that, that's what i'm observing in avocados they are dropping quite a bit yeah so that means it is not able to provide that kind of, that amount of nutrition for all of them 
different varieties what they will do they will divide nutrition instead of you getting these size tomatoes you will get more number of these size tomatoes right so these are the things that plants will do plants are plants are the best software field everything has a logic everything has what been predefined there is nothing that is unknown there is nothing I have that is that uh, uh, the sambar sote ka mangalore cucumber uh, uh. i sowed it it uh, i gave it uh, jivamrata and all but i didn't thought at uh, i i thought uh, uh, this one panchagavya also uh, i didn't started at the right time mm-hmm. before flowering itself i started panchagavya mm-hmm. and i stopped this jivamrata okay, and okay. what happened now around 5 feet or 6 feet the 20 25 i i have done the 2g 3g cutting okay, okay. and every leaf node has one fruit mm-hmm. and my husband says this is abnormal mm-hmm. now i understood that i fed uh, uh, panchagavya at the early stage you know the, the soil has been good it will not make so much of a drastic difference it has it has been good what work to capitalize on what you have done all that you have to do now if there is still the go on going stage you give more liquid nutrition more frequent nutri- liquid nutrition uh, to the uh, soil as well as foliar spray then the fruit formation will still be better so you, no, one job the, you have done better leaf uh, leaf uh, i what i um, um, convey is a leaf uh, veins are mm-hmm. not that not that that big okay big, big. okay but some of them manage mm-hmm. but fruits are becoming more yeah now you give more foliar spray foliar spray so that uh, there is a quick absorption and there is more surface area for nutrition to be absorbed not only waiting for the for through go through the stem okay okay so foliar this will spray. this will help you in maximizing the uh, benefit right or if you think they are too clustered and uh, everything is becoming too thinny you remove one or the other weaker weaker uh, fruits that are set one or the other you remove so that uh, the resources can be focused on the ones which are already good and growing well so no um, um i have to maintain whatever you are doing with the soil, the soil because okay. the more you do the with the soil will not help because help there now, is yeah. there is not enough bandwidth for the uh, plant to absorb so you increase the frequency of foliar spray so that should definitely this help. is the mistake of the stages i applied the nutrition at early stage i applied the wrong nutrition i think probably with panchagavya and jivamrata you cannot say it wrong probably it could be uh, differed because you can also grow only with panch- panchagavya right from day one you can start giving panchagavya and you can still grow right yeah that's what i've been doing uh, it's then, fine right, then what you need to understand is uh, which uh, uh, proportion and combinations work for you best with some iteration you have to understand and then balance this is the first time i'm so whatever guideline one. you have there is a broad guideline to Everything get you started Everything was fine means uh, the uh, starting fruits are uh, like this size hmm. uh, i think uh, within one week one uh, one week i can harvest the first fruits okay okay means uh, cucumber hmm. but the later stage there's also growing but these uh, frequent uh, correct correct means in every this one there's not also falling mm-hmm. they are all growing yeah. yeah let them grow you increase the foliar spray and then foliar see you, you use this you will see immediate benefits uh, coming in or panchagavya jivan jivamrata you avoid now spraying or uh, feeding mm. you sp- uh, spray panchagavya that will be very helpful no jivamrata i stopped you stopped yeah. yeah panchagavya started in the early stage now also i'm feeding okay okay so i think it's a early stage i stopped jeevan so there is some observation already in what i am to relate to what i am explaining here yes yes very nice so because i started i uh, i started this as a first experiment mm. it's a seed is also from the last year mm. not mm. not in this year yeah. what you have given two years back i i showed all of them and you are really plain lucky <laughs> that they are all working because i i uh, made it air tight uh, and i germinated it through the tissue paper tissue paper correct yeah. so because i know that that will not germinate but let's see correct. all uh, out of nine uh, seven are germinated mm-hmm. and then uh, or two plants are died five are fine with okay okay i uh, i planted all five in uh, mm-hmm. four four baskets mm-hmm. so one which is single one is giving most fruits okay okay one with the double one is okay mm. means alternatively they but they have more uh, female flowers mm. which have a two plants right right 
so that is probably another day we can pick up on uh, understanding the plants uh, so sometimes we get confused about the flowering pattern and all that that is another topic yeah i have su- i have succeeded in uh, growing leafy vegetables there's yeah, nothing nice. uh, yeah. now i started with the these gods oh, okay okay super so one one no i have not started with the uh, okra mm. brinjal mm. and tomato sometimes it grows, grows as a weed start. and okay. uh, it will give but they, they are relatively easier uh, the brinjal tomato are all relatively easier chili can be the, a little the, uh, sometimes the sticky june, june yeah i'm seeing with chili i think the over watering can Correct. cause the curling it is sensitive chili is relatively sensitive to watering practices second uh, chili will suffer a lot with calcium deficiency uh, and many times you will not know whether it was viral infection whether it was excessive heat whether it is calcium deficiency because of which it is curling uh, yeah so the effect is the same uh, the, the, the manifestation is very very similar there are subtle differences downward curling because my wife curling. looks at chili and she's like okay this is going to die just take it out <laughs> take it out and i'm like no we have to observe see what's no, going on i think the chili is uh, one season it grows very well as ah, seen from correct. rainy season rainy no? season it grows yeah if you well. so now correct it, it will be very good yeah. up to june and till march because exactly. last year he saw uh, he has sown for me i thought it's uh, yes, uh, february i saw again i saw that one mm-hmm. but that is not a good even though quality is good february is really mm. a, actually a bad month to yeah sow that's when that's ah. when we did the it's a blind spot problem. for sowing actually june <laughs> one june one which continues i've seen because rain is moderate in bangalore not so heavy correct but uh, for summer vegetables i had a problem because mm. i didn't started now it's uh, i'm slowly but again rain will uh, rain came correct, correct. so many veins are they rotted mm. because of uh, we can't trail it out yeah yeah right so i think we have time up okay and uh, thank you so much yeah i i was actor